Today we're exploring the idea of really simple sketching and just asking ourselves how simple can we make our sketches using our ink and our watercolours. There's an amazing artist um, that I'm sure many of you have heard of, especially if you're on Instagram, called Sketernal, or well, that's his uh, that's his Instagram handle. Um, and we can see some of his style here. It's so stripped back, so simple. And when we say simple, that is not a uh, an insult in any way. To be this good and this simple takes real skill. Um, and it's it's actually surprisingly hard to allow ourselves to simplify things like this and to allow ourselves to see things in a way which is this simple and still get the scene across. I want to channel that today. So I'm just going to take a simple scene. It's actually um, something from the imagination which I sketched on my Christmas cards this year. Um, we're going to take this little farm. So we've got a farm, we've got some sheep, we've got some grass in the front. We're going to sketch it a few times and I'm going to sketch it from the front, then from the side, from the back. We'll do a close-up of the sheep. And all the while, we're going to be experimenting with simplicity. So stripping things back, using only a couple of colours on each sketch, and yet filling up a page with fun little artworks, which together are a sort of sense of art itself. If you like these kind of exploratory, interesting art techniques, then do join me on sketchloose.co.uk. I've got a free course, you can find it down below, linked in the description. Um, and also, if you are on Skillshare, I've got a big library of classes there, doing lots of <laughs> silly things like this, which I'd love you to join in with if, if that sounds like the kind of thing you'd like to do, or if you're already on Skillshare. Um, and with that, let's start sketching. All you're going to need today is, well, whatever you've got, really. I'm using a pen and some watercolours, nothing more fancy than that. My supplies are also all listed um, on my supplies link, which you'll find in the description. Um, so let's just dive in and see what we make of our little scene today, see what we make of our scene and how we can adapt and have fun with it. And with that, let's go. So. I hope you've got that silly little farm scene in your mind's eye. I am, of course, joking. You don't absolutely don't need to have it in your mind's eye. You can just imagine very simple shapes. So all I'm doing is drawing a child's version of a house and popping some small shapes inside and doing my lovely, well, I say lovely, I'm biased, doing my continuous lines, which I think are really fun and, and lovely. On the side, we're having a tree. In the winter scene, the tree was a Christmas tree. Today, it's going to be just a normal tree. And then just dancing around the page and finding little fun loops and adding in my sheep. Now, if you want to know how to draw sheep in a really simple way, here's your answer. But shortly, we'll be doing our sheep in a zoomed in sketch. So a little spoiler, but we'll be doing them really simple really fun really easy and it's a great way to add in a sheep to any kind of art and if you if you actually look at a lot of like really brilliant much more realistic kind of acrylics and oils you'll notice sheep are done in a surprisingly similar way to the way i'm doing them today not you know a portrait of a sheep but just the idea of getting in animals doesn't have to be as scary as we think it is that's basically what i'm trying to say so my ideas here for just having fun making this really simple are just basing everything in those really simple shapes so notice how you could break down this image into a series of rectangles circles and triangles if you just pause now and have a look you'll just be, be able to identify that although it looks a bit mad and complicated because it's all joined up actually all i've done is draw very simple triangles rectangles and circles even the sheep are just basically two circles with four little sticks doing a little bit of hatching is a really wonderful way to really sort of engage the viewer create some light and shadow and shape and make a simple sketch appear far more nuanced than it would without it and um, you'll actually see some of these ideas in again a lot of very complicated art but we can make it really simple by just doing our little touches like this today 
So having done the really quick line work there, one of the things I want to do as we move through four or five sketches is to use really minimal colour. Um, I've recently updated my palette. Um, you can find my video about that here um, where I will talk you through the decisions I went through to choose my new colours. Um, and so one way to start to learn more about some of the colours I've updated is to strip things back and just use a couple of colours. So in this first one, we're just going to start off with quinacridone magenta, really lovely, very cool red, um, almost a pink really, uh, pinky purple, um, and a bit of uh, Mars yellow and quinacridone sienna, quite earthy. And nothing that's actually in this real scene, if this scene was real at all, but uh, something we can make abstract and limited and have a bit of fun with. So to start this abstract, limited and a bit of fun kind of way of sketching, I'm going to start really abstract. Um, and this is the first time when I've got my new palette, my new colours, which I'm using this year. Um, it's the first time for a long time I've used Quinacridone Magenta, which is a really lovely, very cool red. You can see it's basically, well, it's magenta. It's basically purple, isn't it? In that, I'm adding some Quinacridone Sienna to warm it up a bit, just to provide that contrast so they're quite close to each other on our on our color wheel you know if we are thinking about the actual hues they're both kind of reds but they're also so different that they are also contrasting in in the colors that they're producing and in the the feel that they give with that using a little bit of my mars yellow which is another warm earthy tone um to create that contrast between bright pink and the more earthy warm and that's where I'm going to leave it and it can really be that simple and that means we can move on to our next sketch but what's going to happen through the next few minutes or the next 10 or so minutes of this video is I'm going to be jumping between sketches so just because we've done one simple sketch doesn't mean we can't come back and touch little bits in and explore it again so that's what we'll be doing as we build up our sketches we'll be coming backwards and forwards and playing around with the previous sketches and this this is supposed to be the same scene and all i'm trying to do is imagine what would this look like if i was standing on the right hand side of that like grain silo and barn and looking straight over the scene so I'm trying to just, in my mind's eye and then on the paper, move the shapes so that the same shapes, the squares, the triangles, the circles, even the little wires, the looping wires, and the sheep in the front are all just shifted around. And it's a bit of a sort of, I guess it's, it's almost like those spatial reasoning tests you may have done as a, a child, certainly in the, in the UK, if you were trying to go for a grammar school or something like that. You have these kind of verbal reasoning and spatial reasoning and trying to work out what would happen if you moved these shapes in a certain direction. Anyway, that, that's the nonsense which is going through my head and that's what it felt like I was doing. Um, but it's quite a fun little challenge. And when we're thinking about doing really simple sketches from the imagination, it can be really, quite for me at least, quite motivating to be trying to work through a challenge to try and improve an element of my sketching, an element of my understanding. So repeating the same scene lets me get better at this kind of scene, better at these kind of shapes, but changing it slightly keeps me interested and makes me think a bit about what I'm trying to achieve with each one. And with this one, having moved it around, we're gonna go for slightly more realistic colors. So here I'm mixing up some yellow, which is azo yellow, some ultramarine blue, uh, along with some various things actually it's got some ma uh, manganese blue hue almost tripped over my words there um, along with some green appetite genuine as well so we, we've actually got four maybe even five pigments now with a little bit of mars yellow making up this yellow green orange wash that's what greens look like in life they look like it's diverse range of everything from black and brown blue shadows through to greens bright yellows whites loads going on the sky here i'm using mostly lavender with a little touch of manganese blue hue in there as well to give it a slightly sort of more bluey hint than that lavender which is quite a warm 
blue if we're going to call it blue it's got that reddish feel to it um or the sort of light purplish feel to it now that things are sort of taking shape i'm using these darker greens mostly green appetite genuine there to provide the idea of some shadow in my trees and do you see how that little touch of shadow lifts those trees away from the grass and away from the sheep perhaps as well and here we go we can now go back and have a go at doing something similar in the other and what i discovered here was that the page was still a bit too wet so when i've tried to put that extra bit of quinacridone magenta on it's kind of spread in a way that i wasn't totally anticipating so I thought, we better stop. <laughs> and again, we can come back later. And I promised you sheep, didn't I? I promised you sheep. So here we go. Here are some sheep. So to draw your sheep, and this is the great fun with really simple sketching, draw your sheep. That would, for me, that's two circles. Not perfect circles, and sheep are not going to be perfect circles, but that's two, two circles with, well, six sticks. Two for horns, four for legs. And that's a sheep for all intents and purposes in any scene that you draw. If you want a sheep, there you go, you've got one. A little bit of hatching again, just like in our buildings, um, can create that fun, that extra shape. The shadow shows this isn't a flat shape, it's a, a spherical object, just to totally simplify a, a sheep. And again, we can just move the orientation of those shapes around. So again, really I'm practicing the same things here really simple fashion practicing the same ideas here as I was with my buildings I've, I've done the sheep and I've slightly moved them around zooming in we can imagine those grass textures and make them a little bit bigger and that's all we need to do now well, we've got a couple of funny little slightly alien sheep to play with I'm going to continue moving around touching bits of color in other places just as I see fit and as my sort of mind decides it want to and here remember i said the page is a bit too wet it just bled out a bit too much so all i've done is come in with a dry brush and remove a bit of the pink that had escaped my tree and as that dries we'll be able to make more and more changes into our sheep now i wanted to make this more of like a monochrome sketch as a another bit of practicing a different kind of way of painting in the first we've got that kind of analogous colour scheme where everything's on one side of the colour wheel, still quite contrasting all on one side. On the next, we've got a sort of semi-analogous, I guess. It's blues and greens, but it feels much more real. And then I thought, let's just do something which is more layered, more about the monotone, the silhouettes. I couldn't help myself adding a touch of green in just to pull apart those trees. The, not trees, are they? Grass. <laughs> But essentially, this is about the monotone shading, that graphite grey. A little bit extra, while it's still wet, will give us a nice soft shape, increase that 3D feel. And there we go. So it's about now that I regret starting, starting my sketching on the bottom and right hand side of my page, because now everything's wet. But in the spirit of this little challenge I set myself, I don't want to, to stop. So expect everything from now to be a lot looser um, because I'm going to have to hold my pen sort of right at the end and just draw, <laughs> draw like that. And that's what I love about sketching, that you just get to do silly things. It's not going to matter if it's not perfect and we'll see what happens. And these are the things which are great fun in sketching anyway, aren't they? You know, you regret and you can hopefully see my awkward hand position and how I'm having to hold my pen uh, differently to normal. You know, not, not drastically differently, but it's definitely... Uh, I've got this sort of feeling that's really affecting my control of the pen. But, you know, you're out and about sketching. You might have to stand up. You might have to put your colours somewhere really awkward. And you just can't quite do what you want to do. And being able to practice and adapt to slightly tedious situations like this is great. Um, and also you might discover something. Um, one of the biggest things, again, I've talked about big problems in another recent video of mine about big problems for beginners. And then another one is having that deaf grip on the, on the pen. It doesn't really matter, pen, pencil, what style you're trying to sketch in. If you're trying to sketch or draw, you need a loose grip on your pen. Um, the loose is obviously a, a gradient. It's not loose or tight, but... 
that really tight grip will not benefit any kind of art. So you can probably, probably benefit from trying a looser, looser grip, like I am today, trying my looser grip here. And with that looser grip comes, comes challenges. I mean, look at that tractor. Um, it, it, this is supposed to be a view from, from behind from behind the farmyard. And actually, it comes together okay. I, I wasn't going to draw the little sort of trailer behind the tractor. But the tractor was so awful that I felt I needed to hide it with something else um, and give another like visual cue. And that, that's what we're doing in sketching, is just creating visual cues. So we are taking a lot of shortcuts to showing people what it is we're trying to draw and I thought if I have a tractor which doesn't look like a tractor <laughs> I don't know what it looks like uh, but I put a trailer behind it it becomes a little bit more obvious what's going on here especially in the context of the the sheep and things you can see as well another problem down the bottom I've just been blotting away some ink and I thought you know what instead of trying to hide that totally I'm just going to pop my signature in it and then I've used another mistake to try something different. I don't know, does it work? It, it doesn't not work, it's not an amazing touch, but it's a nice way to utilise what is basically an error. Um, I was about to go in there, go into the last sketch, and then I just felt this is too challenging, I need to wait for things to dry, I just can't get there. And that gives us another opportunity to dive around the rest of the page. I mentioned the graphite I wanted to layer it up I mentioned that this area of the tree had been too wet for me to control the watercolors properly so I had to try it off had to wait and I think now is a suitable time to come back in with those bold colors I often talk about and just a couple of touches and then I can come back and move on elsewhere and I wanted to try like I said before different things in each part of this scene so here I've previously focused abstract sort of colors I've focused on real colors I've left different areas of negative space I've not done a truly really warm punchy scene though so this is what this is warm punchy and abstract with just yellows and reds that's the starting point and then we can see what happens I was interested so I've mentioned a few times recently this is a new palette for me and you might notice that putting that yellow down, it covers the lines quite a lot. So I'm interested, I haven't yet had a chance to look it up, or I've been too lazy to look it up, but I do wonder if Azo Yellow is a little bit opaque, um, which will, like the lavender, make it come forward, make it more obvious in the painting. But it will lead to challenges where you're trying to use it as a really light glaze. So it's going to be interesting to see when I do use it more and more, how that affects my painting and I'm not going to change it quickly you always need to give yourself a little while to adapt to these things just like that adding a little bit of graphite to mellow out against those warm tones and there's yet another little simple sketch done now for a last thing I thought it'd be fun just let's do a little panorama let's zoom ourselves back from this scene and be really loose and really um <laughs> throw the pen throw the watercolors around I guess my question for you is do you get tired like I do let's be honest even just after these four things I'm stretching my creative uh, muscles and um, pushing my brain around more than it wants to be pushed necessarily um, I'm sketching quite late this evening filming this uh, so do you get tired how many sketches can you do before you get tired um, and what happens to your sketching when you get tired for me, I'll let you know, um, to start with it gets looser and I probably initially actually my sketching gets really good because I, I stop caring so much about the details. Then I can get a bit too rushed and uh, things become messy. Perhaps I don't clean up my palette when I probably should have. So there's an upside and a downside. Um, equally sketching can give me energy. So when I am tired, as long as I let myself just do it, it ends up being fun. I'd love to hear in the comments, let me know your version, when you're tired, what happens to your creativity, to your sketching, both the good and perhaps the challenges. So here we go. This is definitely for me, the challenges, <laughs> they're, they're ramping up. I've got to think of another idea. Um, I've got to do it in a really awkward place on my page. Um, I'm getting tired. So I'm going to get very loose and swirly and swishy. 
But that's great, it's trying something different. So this time more zoomed out, more of a sort of panorama feel. In each of these different sketches, we've tried something different. We've moved shapes around, we've imagined things in different ways. We've done different amounts of hatching. We've left different negative space. We've used different colors. And now we're trying a different kind of composition and a much looser style, even from the very loose stuff I was doing at the beginning. This is a much looser style, you can see it immediately. Still, even within that loose style, notice how the hatching adds something. It adds a little bit of more certainty about whether these shapes are intentional or not. Um, really loose trees, that's how, I, <laughs> that's how I always do them. So uh, you've probably probably seen those before. Um, they're very similar to what I used in other sketches, aren't they? And here we can try another sort of trial of different colors um, so more manganese blue hue and what you'll notice this time is the ink is rather wet so we're going to get the ink wafting up into the color not intentional but i don't hate it and that's fine and as we're doing these things as these little mistakes and sort of errors happen we can think oh well number one do we like it and if so how can we intentionally use this in the future number two do we not like it and if so what could i've done differently to avoid it so obviously here the answer is easy i could have waited a, probably just 10 to 15 more seconds and it would have been dry but equally i can look and go you know what some of that bleeding effect is quite interesting creating interesting textures and that's what i did i sort of thought you know it's moderately interesting so let's try touching a bit of lavender or something else with a different texture in but beyond that i didn't really know what to do so this is just supposed to be little sketches tiny studies having fun exploring a new palette and stretching my creativity a little bit so i'll move on and this is when we looked at skaternal sketching style at the beginning He's an absolute master of this. You can, you know, I've, I've, I've shared a few messages with him over Instagram, but I've not spoken to him, but you can see from his art, he's an absolute master of knowing when is enough. What's the minimum or what's the most sensible thing that we need to do and when do we stop? When is that becoming too much? Simple layering of colors, simple shapes, simple ideas for details. And that is it. That is all you need. And I'd really encourage you to stretch that side of your creativity the what is enough like when am i ruining this or making it less good by trying too hard to add more to it and simple studies a page full of varied things like this can look amazing in your sketchbook and it won't take you too much time you'll get to explore all sorts of different things and it's so risk-free and there we go. Hopefully that was a bit of fun and something a little bit different, really exploring the simplicity that can still be really great art. Um, if you enjoyed it, do like and subscribe. It'd be amazing to have you on my channel. If you hit that notification button, you'll, you'll get up, updated when I get my next video out. Uh, at the moment, I'm releasing a couple of videos a week, at least, normally on a Saturday and a Wednesday. So look out for them then, um, as well as come and join me if you want on Skillshare or on sketchloose.co.uk. So thank you everyone for watching my little sketching videos. If you enjoy my content, please do subscribe to my channel because it makes me really, really happy. Thanks again.